1844. Another new year has begun. We find ourselves still in our hiding place. We've been here now for one year, five months, and 25 days. It seems our life is at a standstill. We are all a little thinner. The Van Damme's discussions are violent as ever. Mother still does not understand me. But then, I don't understand her either. There's one great change, however. A change in myself. I read somewhere that girls of my age don't feel quite certain of themselves. They become quiet within and begin to think of the miracle that is taking place in their bodies. I think what is happening to me is so wonderful. Not only what can be seen, but what is taking place inside. Each time it has happened, I have a feeling that I have a sweet secret. And in spite of my pain, I long for the time when I should feel that secret was in me again. It's me. Everyone, come down. Beep is here. We come to bring you New Year's greetings. Oh, you shouldn't. You should have at least one day to yourself. Don't say that it's so good to see them. I smell the wind and the cold on your clothes. There you are. And how are you, Margaret? Feeling any better? I'm all right. We stopped her fill of every kind of pill so she won't cough and make a noise. Me, Mr. Crawler. With my hope of peace in the New Year. Me. Have you seen Mushi? Have you seen the Manny Bear? I'm sorry, Peter. I asked everyone in the neighborhood had they seen an orange cat, but they said no. Look what Neep's brought for us. A cake! A cake! Oh. I'll get some plates. Oh, Meepia, yeah, you shouldn't have. You must have used all your sugar rations for weeks. It's beautiful. It's been ages since I've seen a cake. Not since the last one you brought us. Remember? It was New Year's, just about this time last year. I remember it because it had peace in 1943 on it. Peace in 1944. Well, it has to come sometime, you know. Hello, Mr. Duso. How are you? Here's the knife, Lydia. Now, how many of us are there? Oh, none for me, thank you. No, thanks. Oh, please, you must. I couldn't. Oh, good. That leaves one. Seven of us. Eight. Eight. It's the same number as it's always been. I left Margot out. I take it for granted she won't eat any. Why wouldn't she? I think it won't harm her. All right. All right. I just didn't want you to start coughing again. That's all. And please, Mrs. Frank should divide the cake. What's the difference? Why? It isn't Mrs. Frank's cake, is it? It's for all of us, isn't it, me? Mrs. Frank divides things better. What oh, are you come trying on. to Stop say? Stop wasting time. Don't I always give everyone exactly the same? Forget it, Carolyn. No, no, I want to know, don't I? Yes, yes, yes. Everyone gets exactly the same. Except Mr. Van Damme gets a little bit more. That's a lie! She always cuts the same. Please, please! You see what a little bit of sugar cake does to us? It goes right to our heads. Here you are, Mrs. Frank. Thank you. You're sure you won't have some? No, really. I have to go in a minute. Maybe Mushi went back to our house. They say that cats do that. I mean, do you get over there sometimes? I mean, do you suppose you could? I'll try, Peter. The first minute I get, I'll try, but I'm afraid with him gone a week. Make up your mind already. Someone's had a nice big meal of that cat. Meep, this looks delicious. Mmm, delicious. Dirk's in luck to get the girl who can bake like this. I have to run. Dirk's taking me to a party tonight. How heavenly! Now remember what everyone is wearing and exactly which way and everything so you can tell us tomorrow. I'll give you a full report. Goodbye, everyone. Just a minute. There's something I'd like you to do for me. Putty? Where are you going? Putty? What are you going to do? What's wrong? Father's going to sell mother's fur coat. She's crazy about that old fur coat. Is it possible that anyone is so silly as to worry about a fur coat in times like these? It's none of your darn business, and if you said one more thing, I'll take you in a... I mean it!
just a little discussion over the advisability of selling this coat. As I have often reminded Mrs. Fandan, it is very selfish of her to keep it when people outside are in such desperate need of clothing. So if you are pleased to sell it for us, it should fetch a good price. And will you give me some cigarettes? It doesn't matter what kind they are. Get all you can. It's terribly difficult to get them, Mr. Van Dan, but I'll try. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, me. Goodbye. Goodbye. Mr. Crawler, are you sure that you won't have some? I'd better not. You're still feeling badly? What did the doctor say? I haven't been to him. No, Mr. Crawler. Oh, I tried. But you can't get near a doctor these days. They're so busy. After weeks, I finally managed to get one over the telephone. I told him I'd like an appointment, that I wasn't feeling very well. You know what his answer was? Over the telephone? Stick out your tongue. <laughs> I have some contracts. I wonder if you'd look over them with me. Of course. If we could go downstairs. Forgive us. I won't keep him but a minute. What's happened? Something's happened. I know it. No, really. I want your father's advice. Something's happened. What's happened, Mr. Crawler? It's something that concerns us here. It's better that we all hear it. But the children. But their magic would be worse than any reality. It's a man in the storeroom. I don't know whether or not you remember him. Carl, about 50, heavy set, nearsighted. He came on with us just before you left. Uh, he wants some Utrecht? tricks? That's the man. <coughs> a couple of weeks ago, I was in the storeroom working. He closed the door and asked me, how's Mr. Frank? What do you hear from Mr. Frank? I told him I only heard there was a rumor you were in Switzerland. He'd said he'd heard the rumor too, but he thought I might know something more. I didn't think anything of it, but yesterday, a thing happened. He brought some invoices to the office for me to sign. As I was going through them, I looked up and saw him standing, staring at the bookcase. The bookcase that hides your door. He said he thought he remembered a door there. Wasn't there a door that used to go up to the loft? Then he asked for more money. 20 guilders more a week. Blackmail! 20 guilders? Very modest blackmail. That's just the beginning. You know what I think? I think he's the thief who was here that night. That's how he knows we're here. How was it left? What did you tell him? I told him I had to think about it. What shall I do? Pay him the money? Take a chance of firing him or what? I don't know. For God's sake, don't fire him. Keep him here where you can have your eye on him. Is it so much that he's asking? What are they paying nowadays? He could get it in a war plant, but this isn't a war plant. Mind you, I don't know if he really knows or if he doesn't know. Offer him half. Then we'll soon find out if it's blackmail or not. And if it is, we have to pay it, don't we? Anything he asks, we've got to pay. Just decide that when the time comes. This may be all my imagination. You get to a point these days where you suspect everyone and everything. On some simple look or word, I found myself... What does that mean? The telephone ringing and on a holiday? That's my wife. I told her I had some papers to go over, to call me when she got done with church. I'll offer him half then. Goodbye. We hope for the best. This is all his fault. Tipping over the chair like that, making so much noise. Sometimes I just wish the end would come. Whatever it is. Margot! Then at least we'd know where we were. You should be ashamed of yourself talking that way. Think of how lucky we are. Think of the thousands dying in the war every day. Think of the people in the concentration camps. What's the good of that? What's the good of thinking of misery when you're already miserable? That's stupid. Anne, we're young, Margaret Pater and I. You've grown up so far, your chance. But we've started to think about all the horror in the world. We're lost. We're still trying to find out. We're trying to hold on to everything. Hopes, ideals, everything are being destroyed. Now, Anna, I only mean that if you would... We weren't here when this started. Anna, so don't try to take it out on us. She talks as if we started the war. Did we start the war? She left her kick. You left us. Thanks. I thought I you were fine just now. You know just how to talk to them. You know just how to say it. I'm no good. Especially when I'm mad. That deuce of what he said about Mushi, about someone eating him, all I could think is that I wanted to give him such a hit. I wanted to give him... That's what I used to do when I got into an argument at school. That's what I... But here, and an old man like that, it wouldn't be so good. 
You're making a big mistake about me. I stay too much. I go too far. I hurt people's feelings. I think that you're just fine. And what I want to say is if it wasn't for you around here. What I mean is... Do you mean it, Peter? Do you really mean it? I said it in time. Thank you, Peter. You've got quite a collection. Would you like some? I could give you some. Heaven knows you spend enough time in your room doing heaven knows what. It's easier. A fight starts in an argument. I, I can just talk in there. You're lucky having your room to go to. His lordship is always in here. I hardly ever get a minute alone. When they start in on me, I can't tuck away. I just have to stand there and take it. You gave some of it back just now. I get so mad. They form on opinions about everything. But we, we're still trying to find out. These problems here are people that our age have ever had. And just as you think you've solved them, something comes along and bang, you have to start all over again. Well, at least you've got someone you can talk to. Not really. Mother. I can never discuss anything really serious with her. Father's all right. But we can ex discuss everything but one thing. Mother. He simply won't talk about her. I guess it's hard to get intimate with anyone if he holds back something. To you? I think that your father is just fine. Oh, he is, Painter. He is. He's the only one that's ever given me a feeling that I have any sense. But anyway, nothing can take the place of school and friends of your own age or need of your age, can it? I suppose that you miss your friends and all. It isn't just... Isn't it funny, you and I? Here we are, seeing each other, every minute, for almost a year and a half. And this is the first time we've ever gotten a really a chance to talk. It helps a lot to let off steam. Well, any time you want to let off steam, you can come into my room. You better be careful how you say that. I can get up an awful lot of steam. Well, that's all right with me. Do you mean it, Peter? I said it, didn't I? We've had bad news. The people from whom we've got a ration have been arrested. So we've had to cut down on our food. Our stomachs are so empty that they rumble and make strange noises, all in different keys. Mr. Van Dyne is deep and low, like a bass fiddle. Mine is high, hissing like a flute. As we all sit around waiting for supper, they can always be tuning up. It only needs Tuscanini to raise his baton and we'd be off in the ride of Valkyries. Monday, the 6th of March, 1944. Mr. Crowler is in the hospital. It seems he has ulcers. Pim says we are his ulcers. Neep has to run the business, and us too. The Americans have landed on the southern tip of Italy. Father looks for a quick finish to the war. Mr. Tuso is waiting every day for the warehouse man to demand more money. Have I been skipping too much from one subject to another? I can't help it. I feel that spring is coming. I feel it in my whole body and soul. I feel utterly confused. I'm longing, so longing for everything, for friends, for someone to talk to, someone who understands, someone young, who feels as I do. yet. How does that? How does that look? Fine. You didn't even look. Of course I did. It's fine. Margaret, tell me. Am I terribly ugly? Stop fishing. No, no. Go on. Tell me. Well, you've got nice eyes and, and a lot of animation. And up to bed, aren't you? May I come in? Come in, mother. Anna. 
Mr. Doosnell is impatient to get in here. Heavens, he takes the room for himself the entire day. You're not going in again tonight to see Peter. That is my intention. But you've already been in there a great deal of time today. I was in there exactly twice. Once to get the dictionary and then three quarters of an hour before supper. Aren't you afraid you are disturbing him? Mother, I have some intuition. Then may I ask you this much, Anna, please, when you go in there, don't shut the curtain. You're sounding like Mrs. Vardar. Oh, no. I don't mean to suggest anything wrong. It's just <clears throat> I wish you wouldn't expose yourself to criticism. I wish that you wouldn't give Petronella Van Dan the opportunity to be unpleasant. Mrs. Van Dyne doesn't need an opportunity to be unpleasant. Everyone is on edge, worried about Mr. Crawler. This is just one more thing. I'm sorry, Mother. I'm going into Peter's room. I'm not going to let Petronella Van Dyne spoil our friendship. Why don't you two talk in the mail? It would save a lot of trouble. It's hard on Mother, having to listen to those remarks from Mrs. Fontan and not say a word. Why doesn't she say a word? I think it's silly for her to stand there and take it. You don't understand her at all, do you? She's not like you, Anna. It's not in her nature to fight. But anyway, the only one I'm worried about is you. What about? I feel I may be hurting you, going into Peter's room. I knew if it would be, I'd be jealous. I'd be desperately and wildly jealous. Well. I'm not. You don't feel bad? Really, truly, you're not jealous? Well, of course I'm jealous. <clears throat> jealous that you've got something to get up in the morning for. But jealous of you and Peter? No. Maybe there's nothing to be jealous of. Maybe he really doesn't like me. Maybe I'm just taking the place of his cat. Wouldn't you like to come in with us? I have a book. <clears throat> yeah, I come in. Just a minute, dear, dear Mr. Dusso. Well, here I go, from the gauntlet. Thank you so much. Look at her. I don't know what good it is having a son. I never see him anymore. He wouldn't care if I killed myself. And, just a moment, I'd like to say a few words to my son. Peter, you're not to stay up till all hours of the night tonight. You're a growing boy. You must have your sleep. Anna is going to bed promptly at nine, aren't you, Anna? Yes, mother. May we go now? Are you asking me? I didn't know I had anything to say about it. Listen for the chimes, Anna. In my day, it was the boys that called on the girls. You know how young people like to feel they have secrets. Peter's room is the only place where they can talk. Talk? That's not what they called it when I was a girl. Aren't they impossible? Treating us as if we're still in a nursery. Don't let it bother you. It doesn't bother me. I suppose you can't blame them. They think back to what they were like at our age. They don't realize how much more advanced we are. When I think of the wonderful discussions we've had. Oh, I forgot. I was going to bring you some more pictures. Oh, these are fine things. Don't you want some more? Me just brought me some. Mm, maybe later. I remember why I wanted that one. I bet Yopi I could eat five ice cream cones. We used to have heavenly times. We'd finish up at the Delphi or the Oasis, where Jews were allowed. There'd always be lots of boys. We'd laugh and joke. I'd like to go back to it for a few days, or maybe even a week, but I don't know. I'd be bored to death. I think more dearly about life now. I want to be a journalist. I love to write. But I don't know. What do you want to do? I thought that I might go off and work on a farm or something, some job that doesn't take much brains. You should talk that way. You have the most awful inferiority complex. I know that I am not smart. That's not true. You're much better than I am in dozens of things like arithmetic, and algebra, and and well, you're a million times better than I am in algebra. 
You like him, I guess, don't you? Right from the start, you've liked him much better than I. Well, I don't know. Oh, it's all right. Everyone feels that way. She's so beautiful and pretty and nice, and I'm not. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Oh, I know I'm not a beauty. Never have been and never shall be. I, I don't agree at all. I think that you're pretty. <clears throat> That's not true. And another thing, you've changed. Well, for my first, I mean. I have? Well, I used to think that you were awful noisy. How I changed, Peter? Well, you're quieter. I'm glad you don't hate me. I never said that. I bet when you get out of here, you'll never think of me again. That's crazy. I bet when you get back with all your friends, you're going to save me. Now, what did I ever see in that Mrs. Quack Quack? I haven't got any friends. Oh, Peter, of course you do. Everyone has friends. Not me. I don't need any. I get along all right without them. Does that mean you can get along all right without me? I think of me as your friend. No. If they were all like you, it'd be different. Meve always brings them to me. Peter, did you ever kiss a girl? Yes, once. That picture's crooked. Was she pretty? Huh? The girl you kissed. Oh, I don't know. I was blindfolded. It was at the party, one of those kissing games. Well, I don't suppose that counted. It didn't with me. I've been kissed twice. Once by a man I've never seen before. Picked me up off the ice when I was crying. The other was Mr. Kupias, a friend of father's, who kissed my hand. I wouldn't suppose those count today, then. <coughs> I wouldn't say so. I'm almost for certain Margaret would never kiss anyone unless she was engaged to him. And I'm sure, too, that Mother never touched a man before him. But I don't know. Things are so different now. What do you think? With the world falling all around our ears, do you think a girl should kiss anyone unless she's engaged to them? What do you think? Well, I've always thought, well, I suppose that it would depend on the girl. Some girls, anything that they do is wrong, but others, well, it wouldn't necessarily be wrong with them. Nine o'clock, I have to go. That was right. Goodbye. You won't let them stop you from coming? No. Sometime I may bring my diary. There are so many things I want to talk over with you. Uh, what sort of things? Well, I wouldn't want you to see some of it. I thought of you the way you thought of me. Did you change your mind about me? The way I changed my mind about you? Well, you'll see. wishes now that Mushi was here. Thursday, the 20th of April, 1944. Invasion fever is mounting every day. Meat tells us that people outside talk of nothing else. For myself, life has become much more pleasant. I often go to Pedro's room after supper. Oh, don't think I'm in love, because I'm not. But it does make life more bearable to have someone with whom you can exchange views. No more tonight. P.S. I must be honest. I must confess that I actually lived for the next meeting. 
Is there anything lovelier than to sit under the skylight and feel the sun on your cheeks and have a darling boy in your arms? I admit now that I'm glad that my dad had had a son and not a daughter. I've outgrown another dress. That's the third. I'm having to wear Margaret's clothes after all. I'm working hard on my French, and I'm now reading Rebel Never Rain. you are saying. I mean exactly that. For two long years we have lived here side by side. We have respected each other's rights. We have managed to live in peace. We're going to throw it all away. I know this will never happen again. Will it, Mr. Van Damme? No, no. He steals once he will steal again. You'd put us Edith, out on please. the streets? There are other hiding places. A closet, a cellar maybe, but we haven't even got money for that. I'll give you money. Out of my own pocket, I will give it gladly. Mr. Van Dan, you said that my, my husband, you could never repay him. You said you could never repay him for the things he had done for you when you came to Amsterdam. If and my I... husband had any obligation to you, he has paid it over and over. Speak. I've seen you like this before. I don't know you. I should have spoken out long ago. You just can't be nice to some people. There would have been plenty for all of us if you hadn't come in here. We don't need the Nazis to destroy us. We're destroying ourselves. Here, give this to me. She'll find you a place. Mother, you're not throwing Peter out. Peter hasn't done anything. Of course not. When I say the children, I mean Peter too. I have to go where father goes. He is no father to you, that man. He doesn't know what it is to be a father. I couldn't stay. I wouldn't feel right. No, Peter, no. They can have my food. I don't want it. And they don't throw them out. It'll be daylight soon. They'll be caught. Please, mother. They're not going now. They will wait until me find them a place. But one thing I insist on. He must never come down here again. He must never again come to the room where the food is stored. We will divide what we have left, an equal share for each. You can cook it down here and take it up to him. No, no, we have been sunk so far that we're going to fight over a handful of rotten potatoes. Mr. Frank, Mrs. Frank. Stop it, Anna. stop it! Margaret. Myself. It's me. At this hour, it must Mr. be Van trouble. Dan. I beg you, don't let us see a things like this. Miss Stop it! Van Stop Dan. it! You're saving all the big ones for yourself. Look at that one. Mr. Another one. Mr. Frank, the most wonderful news you've ever heard. That's wonderful. Everyone, did you hear what I said? The invasion has begun. The invasion. Where? It began early this morning. How do you know? The radio. 
radio, the BBC, the set they landed on the coast of Normandy. The British? The British, Americans, French, Dutch, Poles, Norwegians, all of them, more than 4,000 ships. Churchill, Folk, and General Eisenhower, DJ, they call it. Oh, last. <laughs> Thank God it's gone. I'm going to tell Mr. Crawler this will be better than any blood transfusion. Where did they live on Normandy? Did they say it? Normandy, that's all I know. I'll be up the minute I hear some more news. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, now. What did I tell you? What did I tell you? Sounds so wonderful. Put it. What is it? Please, I am so ashamed. No, oh, Putty, don't. For God's sake. Don't worry, it doesn't matter now. Did you hear what Neep said? We're going to be liberated. This is a time to celebrate, to steal bread from children. We've all done things that we are ashamed of. Stop it now. Let's be happy. Here. Schnapps. Lockheim. <laughs> Hate it. When I think of the terrible things I said. No, no, you were right. But I should say such things to you, our friends, our guests. Stop it, you're ruining the whole invasion. <laughs> <laughs> we're all in much better spirit these days. There's still excellent news of the invasion. The best part about it is that I have a feeling that friends are coming. Who knows? Maybe I'll be back in school by fall. Ha <laughs> ha. The joke is on us. The warehouse man doesn't know a thing, and we're paying him all that money. Wednesday, the 2nd of July, 1944. The invasion seems to be temporarily bogged down. Mr. Crowler has to have an operation, which looks bad. The Gestapo have found the radio that was stolen. Mr. Dussel says they'll take it back and back to the sea. And then it's just a matter of time till they get to us. Everyone is low. Even Pop Pim can't raise his spirits. I've often been downcast myself, but never in despair. I can shake off everything if I write. But, and that is the great question, will I ever be able to write well? I want to so much. I want to go on living, even after my death. Another birthday has gone by, so I'm now 15. Already I know what I want. I have a goal, an opinion. Mr. Frank, the telephone, do you hear? Yes, I hear. But Mr. Frank, this is the third time. The third time in quick succession. It's me, I tell you. For some reason she can't get in the building, she's trying to warn us. Please, please. You're wasting your breath. For three days now, Mr. Frank, Neep is not going to see us. Today there's not a man at work, not a sound in the building. Perhaps it's Sunday, maybe we lost track of the day. You with the diary there, what day is it? I don't lose track of the days. I know exactly what day it is. It is Friday, the 4th of August. Friday, I'm not a man at work. Mr. Frank, answer that. I beg you. No, just pick it up and listen. You don't have to talk, just listen and see if it's me. For God's sake, Mr. Frank, answer that. No, I said no. I will not do anything that might let anyone know where the building. Mr. Frank is right. There's no need to tell us what side you're on. I believe if we wait patiently, quietly, help will come. I'm going down. No. Too late. So we just wait here until we die. I can't stand it. I'll kill myself. For God's sake, stop it. No, I think you want me to die. I think you'd like it if I killed myself. Whose fault is it? We're here anyway. We could have been safe somewhere in America or Switzerland, but no, no. You couldn't leave when I wanted to. You couldn't leave your things. You couldn't leave your precious furniture. Look, 
painter. The sky, what a lovely day. Aren't the clouds beautiful? You know what I do when I can't stand being cooked up for one more minute? I think myself out. I think myself on a walk in the park where I used to go with Pim, with the daffodils and crocuses, go all down the slopes. You know the most wonderful thing about thinking yourself out is that you can have it any way you like. You can have roses and violets and chrysanthemums all blooming at the same time. You know, you know the most wonderful thing about thinking yourself out is that you can have it any way you like. It's funny. I used to take it all for granted, but now I've just gone crazy. That has to do with everything with nature. I've just gone crazy. I think if something doesn't happen soon, if we don't get out of here, I just can't stand too much more of it. I wish you had a religion, Peter. No thanks. Not me. Well, I don't mean you have to be orthodox or believe in heaven and hell and purgatory and things. I mean just to believe in something. When I think of all the good things that are out there, the birds and trees and seagulls, when I think of the dearness of you, Peter, and the goodness of people we know, me, Dirk, Mr. Crowder, the vegetable man. I risk the lives of us every day. When I think of all these good things, I'm not afraid anymore. I find myself in God, and I... That's fine, but when I begin to think, I get angry. Look at us hiding out here for two years and not being able to move. Trapped here like some rats. Waiting for them to come and get us, and, and all for what? We're not the only people that have had to suffer. That doesn't make me feel any better. I know it's hard trying to have a religion. When I think of all the people that are doing such horrible things. But do you know what I think? I think the world may be going through a phase the way I was with Mother. It'll pass, maybe, not for hundreds of years. But someday, in spite of everything, I still believe that people are really good at heart. I want something to happen now, not a thousand years from now. But if you only look at it as part of a great pattern, there were only a little minute in life. Look, Peter, the sky. Isn't it lovely? Someday, when we're outside again, I'm going to... In the past two years, we have lived in fear. Now we can live in hope.
so it seems our stay here is over. They're waiting for us now. They've allowed us five minutes to get our things. We can each take a bag and whatever it will hold of clothing, nothing else. So dear diary, that means I must leave you behind. Goodbye for a while. P.S. Please, please, me or Mr. Crapper or anyone else. If you should find this diary, will you please keep it safe for me? Because someday, I hope, No more. I'd gone to the country to find food. When I got back, the block was surrounded by police. We made it our business to learn how they knew. It was the thief. The thief who told them. It seems strange to say this. Said anyone could be happy in a concentration camp. But Anna was happy in the camp in Holland where they first took us. After two years of being locked up in these rooms, she could be out, out in the fresh air and sunshine that she loved. A little more? Yes, thank you. The news of the war was good. The British and Americans were sweeping through France. We felt sure they would get to us in time. September, we were being told we were being shipped to Poland. The women to one camp, the men to another. I was sent to Auschwitz. They went to Belz. In January, we were freed. There's a few of us who were left. So war was it over yet. So it took a long time to get home. We've been sent here and there behind the lines where we'd be safe. And each time our train would stop at a siding or a crossing, we'd get out and go from group to group. If ever you, were you at Buchenwald, at Belsen, Matthausen? Is it possible that you knew my wife? Did you ever know my husband? My son? My daughter? That's how I found out about my wife's death. Of Margot, Safan Dans, Peter, Dusu. But Anna. I still hoped. Yesterday I went to see a woman in Rotterdam. I heard she had been in Belsen with Anna. I know now. In spite of everything, I still believe that people are really good at heart. She puts me to shame. <laughs>